Hello everybody, my name is Rebo Monkey, and welcome to part 11 of Let's Play Penumbra Overture. We just blew up this wall with a <laughs> explosive. Um, and we're going to red. Alright, locked. Oh, I don't want to go down there. Good evening. You, you, you actually came. There is much that should leave my club box now, but words elude me. You came, you are so pretty, but I have been bad. The underworld already beckons me, so I suppose one further misdemeanor will change little. It is false pretension, and not guiding light with which I have led you here. I cannot give you the answers you want. You may wish to find what it is you seek, but that is a fiction. You cannot know what it is you sought through the vast leaden doorway, or else you would seek anything else in the world. No, the key stays with me, in here, so the life that has led me, horrible as it may be, is better still than the life that waits for you, hungry behind those doors. As replacements go, you shall be admirably had normal. But you must wonder why this metal burning chamber is talking to you and the voice you knew only is red. For it is I, your companion, residing within. You see, I have waited for this day so many years. They won't let me die. They, and parts of my head, are not my own. And I cannot take my life. It is against the rules. Please, the pain has gone on for so long. All I wanted was a friend, but now the time for chit chats and marshmallows by the fire has ended. And I hope that soon, uh, so shall my life. I have knocked on the death's door for so long. Please, let him invite me in for tea. Alright, so I gotta kill this guy now? Come on. Vicious looking things, almost like meat hooks. What do you think they are? Supply pipes. Why would Red want me to kill him? Why like this? What can I do? Combustion meters, measuring temperature, humidity, and gas flow. Meat hooks. Alright, I guess we gotta burn red now. Sorry, dude. This is terrible. Aye, Red. I'm so sorry. Whatever happened to you down there? Or down here? It's over now. Ashes. All that remains of my only friend down here. Rest in peace, Red. I don't even know what it looks like. Oops, okay, there we go. That sucks. This door, it's different. Newer than all the others. This must be where Red's been leading me all this time. I can't get a hold of it. I need something to lever it open. Alright. Just, uh, yeah. It's hydraulically sealed. It won't just pry open. Maybe if I could cut the power. How would one do that, perhaps? What have I not used? <laughs> Bull cutters. Even though I have used these. Christ! I mean, maybe if I cut the power. Oh, red's key! The key red was guarding from me. Was he trying to keep something hidden, or was he really trying to protect me? I don't know, but I'm about to find out when I die in here.
Poor Red, I'm so sorry. You're at peace now. Hold on a second, I wanna... That sucks. My dearest friend. How are you? I'm as well as can be expected. I have some sad news though. A few days ago, there was some kind of collapse, and some of the ceiling of the cave fell in on me. What scares me is that I was in an off-limits part of the mine. They may not look at for me here, but if they do, and they find me, I'll be in so much trouble. But I don't think I'll have to worry about that, because I'm not sure I'll be getting out of here. I don't mind so much. I've been working in the mine for about three weeks now, and I'm, over, I'm really proud that I could send money home, but it's pretty tough work, and so far you're the only person that's really been nice to me. Plus, I have some, com some nice company down here. There's some friendly kindy, kinda creepy crawlies and some books I, bought, I brought from home that I was taking to the rec room. If you think about it, I was really quite lucky I had all this stuff with me, otherwise I'd be bored stiff. As it is, I have Shakespeare, Bront, Nietzsche, <laughs> perfect bedtime reading. Although I suppose I might be trapped here long enough that I have to read them twice. I always used to ask my mum how long people survive without food and things. I read so how some people can survive underwater for f more over five minutes. And some people last in the desert for weeks. But but she always said you had three minutes of air, three days of water, etc. I suppose I'll probably find out soon enough. I guess if I had to, I could find food around the place. Like I said, there's all sorts of creatures here. But they're better off as my friends than my lunch. I wonder whether I shall starve to death or go cave crazy first. Neither sounds too much fun, I guess. But if I f had to choose, I'd say I'd want to go mad. It sounds like an adventure. Tom Redwood, proper mine worker, December 1920, age 14. Age 14? Oh. Hello. Okay, that was me. Leaving out how Red managed to catch and kill this thing. It's quite clearly inedible. Poor guy. Must have been close to starving to death. It smells like a sewer. How did Red sleep on this? Maybe he just didn't sleep. That sucks. So he's been down here for like 10 years or something. The chains on his arms are visible now, but not there out of choice. Father looks on aghast. He clutches some notes, shaking hands. He knows. He knows what has come. What the man has released. The only one who could stop it. Howard knows the real fear. If I never see another one of these, of these things, I don't know. I don't like them, but at the same time, I know... That I'm leaving a part of myself behind each time I go near them. Can I just leave it here? Reams of books. Where did Red scavenge all of these from? There's everything from survival manuals to the collected works of Shakespeare and Kant's ethics. If this was how he spent his time, no wonder he spoke so strangely. He must have led a time or a lifetime of misunderstanding. How many hours did he spend with his neck in this noose just trying to end it all? No wonder he was getting hungry. What a final meal. Rationed slugs. Still knowing red, perhaps he enjoyed them. Oh, can I move this? Ah, there it is. It's an electrical panel. Pl funny place to have one. Screwdriver. 
Help me out here, bud. Too far away to use that. Oh, nice. Uh, saw. There we go, we finally used the saw. Amazing. What? Oh, okay. Well, this is sad. Jesus, from the stench, I think he's been... This toilet. Yep. Alright. Okay, I need the... There we go. As I stepped into the mouth of the underground facility, there should have been questions, fears, doubts running through me. Instead, I was torn in two. Parts of me felt... I can't, like, talk... I can't talk with this in my ears. Parts of me, I felt, had died along with me on the alley. And friend, his final words had raised more questions than they'd answered. And I couldn't get his screams for help out of my head. Despite knowing, deep down, that the pain I had caused Red was, itself, all the help I could have offered him. I was alone again. But I had nothing to do other than press on into the unknown. If I'd felt so bad about Red, I should have listened to him and stayed where I was. I would trade his fate a hundred times for my own. The other side of me was looking forward to what might await me in my continued journey. I felt sure that I would soon find some clue or other to my father's fate and that he was inextric inextricably linked to everything that has happened or was happening. I also couldn't help but suspect that everything I had seen up until that point was just symptomatic of whatever lay beyond the threshold. I know now. I was right. Um, so I think this game might end soon, because I remember last time, or in the, the Black Plague, we woke up in the middle of the facility, so... No spoilers here, right? Oh. Welcome to the shelter. Established. 1973. Da da da. 57. Um. Howard Lafresque. That's this guy's father. Neil Oswald. I remember Wilbur Frisk. All these people are important. Alright. There's a guy there. Oh, my flashlight doesn't work, guys. Get me out. Yeah, my flashlight doesn't work, guys. Dynamite time. Oh, that was crazy. Oh. With that, the man who had first descended into the mine was no more, and so began my next chapter. To be continued. Okay, so that's... Oh, right, that was awesome. Here, you guys can watch the credits. I'll be right back.
I'm gonna just turn down the, the audio here. So yeah, that game was great. I really, really, really regret not playing this game before the other game I played. I think I'd have I would have had a lot, a lot better experience. Um, of course, you know, um, it's still good. Um, I thought that part with red is really sad. Um, you know, it gets the feels going. Um, I think this was really well made. It was weird. Some of the worm parts got were a little awkwardly put in, like, you know. And it was weird, some of the level layouts, like, that whole hallway area where I was running away from the worm was like a chemical laboratory, apparently, but I don't know, it didn't really seem like one. Maybe it did, I don't know. I was too busy running away from it, but you know. Um, they kind of did that in the, the second one as well, in Black Plague, because, like, the part where you had to run out of that, like, catalyst area where you did the, like, claw hook game, um, that area is really strange. Uh, the corridor where you had to run away before the place exploded. Um, yeah, this was really fun, though. I really enjoyed this. Um, I might do a thing on Penumbra Requiem. I probably will. Um, but for now, my name is Rebo Monkey. I hope you've enjoyed this um, Penumbra Overture. I'm really sorry I didn't play this or play Black Plague after this. Um, but yeah, um, hope I see you in the next episode, and bye!